Welcome gamers to episode 6 in this Let's Play series of Distant Worlds 2. My name is Daz Tactic. We're playing as the Gizarian Empire. And in the last episode, we landed on this um, Keterov planet. This is uh, Klatuni 3, which was an independent planet. A few different things are sort of happening in through here. You can sort of see that there was scouring, uh, there's scouring unhappiness for a couple of years. So we've still got a little bit of time for that one to kick in. So the colony happiness will be negative 10 uh, for a little while. And also this one here, the scouring, the Gizarian population growth. So we actually end up with the Gizarian population growth of plus 20%, which sort of has taken our 7% population growth at our home world up to 8.2, I think it is at this point in time. Uh, our troops have landed. Some of these have been designated now as uh, you know, filling in here essentially as the um, uh, what is it the uh, God, <laughs> as the garrison troops, uh, but we do actually we're going to be wanting to get these battle pod swarms back out of out from here. That's actually not right. I'm just looking at the defense strength and attack strength there. Um, Sixty ninety. That it should not be correct. I'm just going to go and have a look at the home world and just see because this is all in, in the same system. Is it the same? No, these are better. 106, 159. I think these are more advanced. One thing we can have a quick look at is just to see if there's a... Um, uh, if we go across to troops. So we have... Um, some of them actually are... Now, if we go across to uh, at colonies, just do them at colonies, and then we've got the... Uh, just looking for the actual troops themselves... At, uh, at the Keterov world. Might rename the Keterov world as well. This one here. Oh, this is why. So it's actually coming up uh, where it's actually trying to repair itself. So it's not quite ready yet. Um, yep, so the defense strength is um, 90 out of 159 and the attack strength is 60 out of 106. But that will then improve over time and the readiness is only 57%. So it's building back up its readiness. That's fine. Um, right, what we'll do is we'll have a quick look first of all and just see if it's worth going back in. I'll just press F1, bring this one up and just have a quick look at what the Keterovs have. Now the Keterovs at this stage are not a playable faction. So we'll need to uh, just have a look and see what uh, what they do have in terms of their uh, um, You See, their attack and defense is fairly poor, 72-108. Compare that to the Gizarians. Um, 92, 138. So we're better off forgetting about using Keterov uh, troops. I mean, they, they can sort of work a little bit, but if we stop that from happening at this point in time and just, just um, we'll bring across more troops from over here. So we are building, madly building up at the moment, um, a whole group of group more of, of troops. We've sort of queued up a whole lot of cloned war swarms. They'll be built fairly fast. So uh, there's actually this is now dropped down to plus seven point five. So that's dropped down down a little bit. That's okay. Everything's okay. So uh, let's go back out again and um, we'll grab the third fleet. I think is this one here. Yeah, we've got no troops back on board. I will eventually be wanting to take these um, all of the all the battle pod swarms off the planet uh, because these don't do great as as defenders. So they they their defense strength is only eighty. You can sort of see through here eighty six. So it's not really all that strong. They're good at attacking but not defending. So we will be wanting to move them off. And I don't really want to be getting the Keterovs annoyed too much. I mean they're already fairly annoyed at negative eight. So they're very angry with us at this point in time, uh, but they will eventually come good. And uh, I don't want—I don't really want revolutions while I've got uh, these sorts of battle pod, pod units here in a defensive role. I, I want them for attack roles, and I'm not just going to leave one behind either. So we'll wait until we've actually got a, a few more, and then come back in and just drop in a, a, a ready-made garrison of maybe five or six uh, infantry guys in through there as well. So we'll just move the. Um, the third fleet back home again. So we'll just move it back up into here. Uh, so we will then come back. Now, with the last one as well, we did pick up uh, research breakthroughs. We've got the improved frigates. 
uh, came through and we've got a tech acquired in conquest so during a recent conquest of Clatoonie from the independence we, we acquired the following research so improved missiles we got not that we really need those at this start the stage but we also then with the scouring we then pick up another tech increase and that was the improved frigates so we ended up with one from the conquest and one from scouring afterwards and this was actually to go and get the um, the improved frigates which i'm actually really happy that we've got it gives us so many more options let's have a quick look and see what that means so if we go back into planetary governance we're still 10 years away with that one um but we can just go and have a quick look at the improved frigates which are down through here up here so it would have been great to have gotten destroyers but the frigates are still very very good and so when we hover over this we can then sort of see that we've got um five weapons on the heavy frigate so there's a lot of weapons four engines four defenses so that's a lot of defenses there as well uh one hanger still one hanger across all of these new new ones and um yeah and two, and two sensor slots so two sensor slots for everyone the fast frigate has 11 general and the others have got 10. We don't need a lot of space with the general slots. Uh, other things we have is we have four defenses there for the fleet frigate as well and five engines on that one uh, with four weapon slots. So th only three weapon slots there for the fast frigate. Now, I probably do want to have more firepower than not. So I'm looking really at either the, fast fr the fleet frigate, uh, which does have the extra engine or the heavy frigate. We might have a look and see what both of those designs look like. So let's just go and exit research, go across into here. I want this for my main attack fleet. Um, we had just finished off designing the normal frigate and before we actually ended up getting this particular technology. So if we go across, we're going to sort by role and we now actually have all of these. Let's just see what the heavy frigate has got and then we'll compare it to the fleet frigate. Uh, the fast frigate, I think we can sort of ignore that one because we don't need a fast ship as such. So heavy frigate, edit, and just see what the game has designed for us in here. So when we have a look at, uh, it's mainly the weapon mounts is what I really want to have a bit of a look at. So we've got a 360 mount at the top. Uh, when we come back down into this side, I'll just get this one set up. We should remember what you've done in here but we've got the uh, sentinel multi beam with a 360 range this time which is great uh, at the back end they're not using anything that's been empty as well at the front through here they've got concussion missiles in the middle they've put a thuon beam on that side and that one's empty as well so they haven't made optimum use of all of the different weapon mounts um, they are pretty close to the maximum level so that's actually fairly high the, uh, the energy using, usage is fine, and they're just using a single Nova core reactor. They've still got one empty, empty slot back in there as well, uh, and they're using a countermeasures and a short-range sensor array. So we'll be wanting to change that one up. So I think what it comes down to is if you use a heavy, you probably get rid of the, the, 20, the size 25 small hive hanger. You probably don't need all five of these, to be honest, all five weapon mounts. Um, let's go and uh, cancel that one and have a look at the fleet frigate which does give us extra, uh, extra uh, um, uh, engines. So we'll just go and edit this one. Now we don't get the 360. The 360 is worth a lot, I've got to say. So we probably would err on the side back of the previous one if we don't need the extra, extra engines. Now this one also has got the same sort of internal late loadout as the other one. It's got similar sorts of weaponry, to be honest, because it's still not using that bottom one and it's still using the small hive hanger. So it's hardly any different, except that this one doesn't have the benefit of the um, of having the Sentinel with a 360 uh, range, field of fire. So I think we'll go back to the heavy in this case. I mean, this one does have a little bit of an advantage with ship speed and maneuvering. So this one gets, goes a little bit faster just from the actual fleet frigate hull. So reactive rating is a, a four, iron defense of two, countermeasures of plus 10 and targeting of zero. So it, it does get a little bit of extra countermeasures. Let's just go back out again, cancel that one again and have a quick look again at the heavy frigate. So we'll just go and edit this one. And so this one has countermeasures of 15. So it's a little bit more protective, but doesn't have the speed bonuses. I'm actually okay with that. This one actually is running at 60, which is about the same speed as my other ships anyway. But I do like having this 360 mount. So I'm pretty sure if we go back to the fast frigate, we're not, still not going to get the 360. Yeah, we don't get the 360 mount at the top there. In fact, we don't even get this one in the middle here. So I think we'll uh, ditch the fast 
Uh, this one is um, set to run at uh, 86, so it is it is very, very quick. This one only has countermeasures of plus 5. So the countermeasures of plus 15 is actually worth a fair bit to us. So I think that that's actually worth going for. Let's just cancel that one. So our heavy frigate, we will uh, edit this one down now. Um, definitely going to keep the sentinel beam in the middle there, so the sentinel beam can stay where that is. Let's get rid of the concussion missile. We'll get rid of the thuon beam just so we can sort of come back and attack attach this one. I'm thinking of keeping the um, the, the hive small the small hive hanger there. Um, I'm going to keep the countermeasure system in here to get another plus 15. We get 15 from the from the actual hull anyway on the heavy frigate, and uh, so we then end up getting like a total at the moment of countermeasures of plus 42. Now the short, the short range sensor will be adding two to that one. So now we're down to plus 40 just by getting rid of that one. Uh, how are we getting the extra 10? I'm not seeing how we're getting the extra 10 there. Um, <clears throat> we've got the 15 there. I don't know if there's any other countermeasures. There, oh, there may be with the crew systems. That's damage reduction or the command center. There we go, countermeasures of plus 10 and targeting of plus 10 by having the uh, command center there. So that's actually where we're getting the extra 10 from. So that's sort of when, when we add all those things up, that's what's actually happening. Countermeasures is quite useful just for for survivability. We definitely, definitely want to have the, um, the swarm targeting back into here. Now that's going to then probably push us over the edge. Oh no, we've still got heaps of space because we've taken all the end, all of the uh, all of this stuff off. Now we have three armor and one shield generator. Um, I'm actually okay with that. We don't really probably need the, the one at the back. So let's now just deck out the front. And I'm thinking we use medium torpedoes all the way through here. If we just make this into, like we've already got one torpedo design. This one's a bigger design. That then takes a fair, a fair way over. At, uh, fi um, yeah, so that's actually a long way over. If we just ditch that one there, we're still a fair way under that way. Actually, no, only five under if I get rid of one of the torpedoes. In fact, if I put the torpedoes on either side, ditch it from there, you've only got five left, three engines. So we're traveling at um, 61 here, yeah, which is fine. Well, that still gives me the two torpedoes, but I do actually have a better better field of fire here. So this is actually a better design than what we had done previously. Um, I might put this one as the um, torpedo heavy frigate. All right, and uh, we will save and exit that one. So we've actually now got a torpedo heavy, heavy frigate, but we also have a torpedo frigate. Let's have a quick look and see what this one actually had internally it had one less fuel cell we could go back and do that and still potentially pick up at least a, a one other weapon in the in the front there that would give us 15 a, a size 15 weapon which could allow us to then for example place an iron cannon or something like that on there um, it had yeah two uh, this one actually was no like it had less armor very similar to everything else we actually had in fact, the, the actual loadout is, is almost identical, except that we, we were using the Sentinel beam at the front. We didn't have the 360, so we're not going to use this design. Um, yeah, so we did actually end up with the... We're, like, we have less um, general slots that, on this particular design than what the other design had. This one only had countermeasures of plus five as well. So we do get extra speed and maneuvering, so this one will actually be faster. This one's 73, so it's a fair bit faster than the other ship, but it's not as not as well rounded. So I think we'll still stick with the. Um, I think we'll just cancel that one, and I probably won't bother um, with this. I might sort of uh, just get rid of this one. I might just make this one back into a manual design. And, uh, and then make this one into an obsolete design straight away. That way we're sort of only going to be using the torpedo heavy, heavy frigate. This is having just that little 360 degrees does make a big difference. Now, do we want to go with the extra armor? This is worth 10 to us, and we've, so that would give us 15. We can also ditch one of the fuel cells 
because we do have a big extended fuel range. If I got rid of that one, we're down to 533, which is the same as the other one, but now we have 15. We've now got 15 that we can actually now go and add into the size, which means if we have a quick look at the at the engines, we can put a, a small Thuon beam there at 14. Um, point defense cannon there, we don't really need that. I'm thinking of the iron cannon. This is only size 12. I mean, I don't know if we can throw another engine in. The engine takes us over by five, so we'll get rid of that. We could put a thrust vector in if we had to, but I think we're better off trying to make use of this uh, this mount this mount slot in through here. So maybe we'll go with an iron cannon in the middle there. Just place one of them in, into that central mount. It's only uh, it's only got a field of fire of 90, but that would be uh, something we'd, we'd hopefully be able to then start to disable the enemy ships, even just with the, with this little design. So um, that would then hopefully allow us to then finish her off with the torpedoes. That's I think works. The other thing I could have done would have been, with that one gone, um, if we've got 15 there, and I've got um, two lots of 30. If I went back to Thuon Beams, that's 28. So I'd save another four on each of those, which would then give me 19 in the middle there, which I don't really need. No, I'm happy enough with what I've got. This will do. So the Torpedo Heavy Frigate will be our, our main design. We'll just save and exit this one. And, um, and then what we'll do is we'll just come back across into our fleets and this is going to be our attack fleet is when we're going to be changing and we're going to go with the frigate it's going to be the latest design for the hull heavy frigate now this one also does come now with the uh with the um the uh, sm small craft we're going to have fighters and bombers as well back on this one now the other thing we can do is actually check and see what we've got how we've got the fighters and bombers decked out because they may not be what we want um, let's have a quick look and see what we've got with those as well. So we'll just leave that one with 10 and then one, fu uh, one fuel tanker. We'll need to get our money up before we can do anything with these. Just double check that's got everything, sector range, yep, heavy, heavy frigate, that's all fine. All right, so we'll close that one off and close that one off. And, uh, and then we'll have a quick look at back at our designs again. Because it's, we can also then go back into the bomber. We've got the bomber three basic bomber. If we just go and edit this one, I think that's the better way to do this. We've got the interceptor as well, the basic fighter. Now this is the it's the basic fighter, basic bomber. Is that what we've got? Oh yeah, it would be. It would be. We actually have our own set of um, of ships. So we've actually got the hive star fighters with basic fighter, basic bomber in through there. The star fighters also have basic fighter, basic bomber as well. But ours, I think, are identical in this sort of sense. Pretty sure that these are identical, but these are the ones that we actually have. The difference is really the hive hangers, where they can actually build faster and repair much faster as well. So let's go back in and have a quick look back in here again at the bombers. So we'll just go and edit. Now it's using Thuon beams, so two Thuon beams on either side. It's got a heap of space on board. It's got a Nova Core reactor. Now that's um Can we throw one of these on? No, it only can take two engines. It's got one little shield. Okay, that's fine. So throw on beams back in through there for the fighters. Now we could actually change this one to um to actually it doesn't have the, the torpedoes. That's interesting. I thought it would. All right, Thuon beams I'm actually happy with. I am actually happy for it to be a, a beam a beam bomber. Uh, we'll cancel that one and we'll have a quick look at the interceptor. It's only got one. Yeah, so it's only got a, th a small Thuon beam here. It's funny, normally they, they actually have access to the, to the fighter. Let's just go back to all components. Yeah, it doesn't actually have it doesn't actually have it for the um yeah that's strange not sure what's going on there because they normally the um the game normally it does allow uh these to actually have the uh, the torpedoes little torpedoes which are actually really quite good 
<laughs> I do like them. Uh, anyway, this will be fine. So this has just got the... Uh, uh, we'll cancel those. I'm just going to let them... I'm happy enough with what they were. So that's actually all okay. Uh, let's just let the game run forward. I will actually just pause... I'll pause my recording now until something actually happens. But uh, it, we've sort of hit a fairly important, um, I guess, point in the game where we are now starting to get other other areas. And we've, these guys are now at war with each other, which may lead to other things we can then go and do at some other point. We do have a refueling option there. That's interesting. All right, that's fine. What are our, what is our one spy? We've only got one spy left. So he's going to have that one ready in about a month's time. Getting, sealing that reactor from the Quamino was very, very important. Anyway, I'll pause the recording and be back when something happens. Actually, this is the colonizer. This is, I have hardly pause it and then I've unpause it again because we are going to be colonizing this world as well. Now we really do have to get and get troops out and about all over the place. So we probably will have to manage how things operate a little bit initially because we will now need to go and protect this particular planet. I might grab the second and give this the home base actually once we actually do it. They're now leaving the, the troop, uh, sorry, the colonizing ship. So it's the colonists making landfall on this particular world. Just taking a few seconds to do this. More more, more uh, colonists now hitting the uh, hitting the ground here. There we go. New colony founded. So we've got this one as well. Um, right, I'm just going to pause this and then rename these new planets. All right, so I've called this particular planet Keterov Yards, which is the Keterov planet, and West Dune is going to be the other world that we actually have uh, back over here. And so West Dune will be the new planet that we've just gone and created, which is west of our, uh, our current location, and it is a sandy desert planet, so it sort of works. <laughs> uh, Daz Hive is our home world, of course. Now, we, you can see there it's costing us a lot at Keterov Yards until these become assimilated. It's going to take a little bit of time to get them assimilated. What we'd be wanting to do, though, is to land a lot of troops, and then we're going to push the assimilation uh, just through um, to get revolutions happening on the planet as quickly as possible. That's the fastest way to assimilate. I don't like that gaminess of it, to be honest. So I wish that the, it, the game played differently than what it does. But um, that's one way that we can then sort of push the push the um, the assimilation rates up uh, much, much higher at the expense of population, which I'm sort of happy enough to do. Uh, now, Yogar Priltok has come back. So he successfully carried out the mission to steal the galaxy map of the Astute Camino Order. Let's have a look and see what that's given us. <clears throat> Just leave him to his own devices. So we now see everything that they've got. And there is actually another independent world back up in here of... Um, where was that one? This one, that one. All right, so we've got a Tooks back in through here, which are very similar to uh, Tekans. So um, these have also got a very, very high growth rate. That would be a good planet for us to try to take. Um, <clears throat> we should be able to do that as well if we really wanted to. We're just going to get more troops. So we are sort of seeing everything that they're now aware of. Throughout the, throughout the Empire. We might have another quick look and see if there's been any more. Yeah, there's now six sources of polymer. So there's a lot more back out this other side. We've got the home worlds. Only got the one inside our own territory. Carbonite, six in through there as well. Now we may end up, once this one becomes strong, we may end up take, claiming all of this, this territory back in through here. A Caprica doesn't matter. Uh, what else is important to us? Probably just Caslon, really, because that's really where every fleet is going to need Caslon. There's a heap of it in here. There's not much here in the border, which is interesting. Um, so a quick look. Where's the? Where are the? All of these guys now? Yeah, we've got another one heading off. This one's coming into retrofit. 
I had meant to go off and uh, and push these into other directions. Um, yeah, I can't sort of see it there anywhere. Where's another one? This one is coming back into retrofit as well. That one's heading back out again. I'm going to go and uh, send this one over to, to this location. I don't know why we haven't gone there yet. So we'll explore that one, but just put it back onto fully automate. And hopefully we'll then start to sort of search a little bit further out into the void. Um, anyway, that's all looking good. Mission complete. We'll just dismiss that one. And I'll pause again and uh, let the game run forward a little bit more. Okay, so we've actually now got our Explorer back down in through here. So it's just sort of bounded in between this uh, forest planet and its moon. So it's got a, got a rock, rocky metallic moon. So this one will now just sort of explore. But we immediately have found that at the moon of Roop, there is actually a um, plus 11% hyperdrive research and plus 7% reactor research. So we do want to actually go and, and build a, a station here. It'll take a little bit of time, but there is actually a, uh, a Gravelex in through there. I'm just going to grab my first fleet and send it off to kill this. So we'll attack that one. Uh, in the meantime, we'll wait for this to uh, finish off doing part of its exploration. And then hopefully we can... Well, then it'll appear here fairly soon. Now, again, this is only small, small biscuits, so we'll just go and accept this trade again, just trying to get them as friendly as possible. They're just giving us system maps. I don't think it's anywhere that's important. I would like to know what these actually are. Um, oh, way over here, by the looks, we've got, it. we've got an extra one back over that side. Don't know where the other one would have been. Anyway, that's all okay. Was that the one? It's a Mali. Yeah, not really all that important. They don't. They never, very rarely give you good information, but um, that's what it is. Okay, got the. Um, they've made, now made peace. Dismiss that. That one has gone back to refuel. Did we do any information there? Yeah, we didn't even do it. Get anything done. All right, the fuel tanker has now been completed, so we're, I'm starting to now build up the next fleet. Um, yep, found another location. Mission complete, so has evaded detection, has carried out research information on starfighters, which we don't really need, to be honest, but we'll still let it just happen, so we'll just get on top of all of the different techs. This is the... We can't... We've got our own starfighters, which are better than the, the, treat, the standard ones from the, from the, from the game. So I'm sending in the first fleet just to attack that Gravelex. Just get rid of it. This eventually will be become a more dominant planet. We've already doubled our population in just you know in, in very very short period of time there, from 30 million up to 61 million. Now we'll just keep on expanding. This will then push out. This is like a little binary system in through there, which doesn't have anything. Another another planet with nothing there. So these are all pretty useless. We will get hold of them, but it won't really make, make any difference. We may end up with, Pe uh, with um, Peacock and also um, Sadakbia back over this other side. Nothing much there that we really want. There's a bit of, of Carbonite, but we, we're okay for Carbonite. It still is actually just trying to get hold of the uh, other, like the, what is it, the, the uh, Polymer is really the one that I'm still looking for. Now, there may still be an option that uh, that we end up getting it over here. There may be more polymer at a, at a forest planet. And we do we will have to wait until we get the exploration done before we can then go and build a, um, a, a something else there. So we're sort of stuck there a little bit. Here they come. Go and kill off this Gravelex. Just follow it in. Let's just shift T to get that that vision there. It's coming directly at us, firing at us. And we got hit. Everything came down. So the armor and the shields. So it's now moving out of the way. It's gonna jump or jump away. It missed with the second one. I might just go and grab another one as well. So shift T. In fact, we don't have much. Just go tab. 
I'll just follow this one in. There's the one that's escaping. So we've hit it with another one. So these, I think we've just put the new shields on these. Yeah, everyone's running. What have we done to this one? Seems okay. Let's press tab again. Yep, got the carcass there. We do want to pick this up, so I'm just going to go back with one of these ships and just pick it up. Maybe with a couple of these. Because this does give us a nice boost to our colonies. It's got the reactor offline, so it can't actually can't escape. It got hit pretty hard. This one, this one's got the admiral on board. So we'll just have to wait for repairs. So we bring on the Gravelix crystals on board. So they're going back home. Just grab the first. I'll just put it back into defend mode. That way it'll wander off. The one that is injured, the immortal fate, uh, we'll have to wait until the reactor's back online. Now this has not been destroyed, so that's actually okay. There we go. We're back up, up and running again. This one's still coming back in to pick up even more. Actually, this one's got a couple of um, battle pod swarms on board, which we don't need. Shielding is now starting to come back up again in here. Now it may be that we end up with uh, shielding not working here for some reason. I'm not sure why that would be. You can end up with sort of weird, weird, um, you know, events in space. There's no nebula there. They'll be going back to defend the same location. They'll end up just fixing themselves up as well. So we'll leave them where they are. Uh, the second is back at... Uh, they've also got like one armour on the, on their their troops. Actually, what are they off to? They're now back going back to retrofit. <laughs> I thought they were okay. Uh, let's have a quick look and see what we're doing back in here again. Now we are starting to pick up a few other troops and things, but a lot of these are garrisons. So I think I'll just let them keep on building up the troops and then we'll start to sh uh, shuffle things around a little bit into the other locations. Uh, there comes back one of the others. This is coming back into refuel. It's got the Gravelix crystals on board. And then these are going to be coming back as well. That one's not running for whatever reason. Yeah, there's something weird here, like the hyperdrive keeps on going offline. There's things that are being disabled here all the time. Might have a look to see if we can figure out what's going on. It's almost like there's an, some sort of anomaly. I mean, it is bluish sort of tinge to it. That's the nebulas. It looks like a dangerous area, doesn't it? It just looks like we just can't quite break out of here. If I go to another location, doesn't turn blue. Like that's a different oh that's a reddish sort of colour. It may mean that we need to get the uh, the shields, the um, and we can get them from the Tekans, we can steal them eventually from the Tekans. Yeah, it keeps on losing things. It keeps on being disabled. What I might do is I might just get these three ships right out of here. Just try to get them into space. Sometimes this can happen when you've got when there's problems. Yeah, these are losing shielding all the time. Yeah. 
This one is also okay. All right, they've they've hit. Um, we'll just move them out to here. It's jumping, and it's now away from there. So it's away from that the cancer area. So this is actually uh, the explorer is now is coming coming in. We should get some answers once that one finishes exploring through there. Mission complete but exposed. Our agent, Sir Yogar Priltok, has been detected after successfully carrying out their mission to steal research information on starfighters from the astute Kumino order. Uh, while the mission succeeded, our ex agent's exposure will have diplomatic consequences, so the Kumino will now become less, um, less friendly with us. Uh, yeah, they're going back to repair now at the Katerov Yards. That's, that's fine. They're trying to all join up together again. So there's something definitely here. It could be a like a micro type nebula or something. I don't know what that is. No wonder no one wanted to go back in there and uh, check it out for us. Okay, we've now got the Kerov yards have now been built. So we've now got a uh, small spaceport built there. So that's good. Um, we will be able to use this one for construction and all sorts of different things. One of the things here as well, we, we, there's a lot of... Um, minerals on this particular planet that were here like 2000 polymer so it gives us an option now to keep on building now if we've got a heap in here if we just go back to the fourth fleet which is the new one that i'm building up i'm just going to go and grab as many of these as possible these are the um the new heavy frigates so they're coming in one two three four five six seven eight nine so yeah we still need to build a few more to get this fleet up and running properly Anyway, I'll pause again and uh, come back when there's another piece of action that's actually happening. I don't think it's going... Yeah, that's just going to meet up with this group. I'll just get them to um, to refuel and repair back at the Keterov Space Yards. So it's funny. if we Now, before this one goes in, let's have a quick look at this one. Shielding on full. Okay, so shielding on full comes into the system and then shielding starts to sort of be impacted. Gone. So and then a lot of things are brought down at this particular location. So let's just watch what actually happens in here. Things are coming back online again. So there's definitely something happening in here. Hyperdrive offline. We'll just see if we can actually do the exploration without having an iron shield. We need an iron shield to be sort of secure in here. But this this whole system, there's something weird happening. <laughs> Something very, very strange, which we don't know at all about yet until this one can start to do its uh, do its job. Hyperdrive offline. It's got no mission. Frigates are now being completed. That's all good. Uh, they're offering to sell us another small map. I'll accept this trade again. Now, have we done any of this exploration yet? Yeah, this one is coming back in to explore Roop. Now it keeps on being hit and stopped. No wonder they didn't try to do this. Just see what happens. Like it'll get to a certain level, be disabled, and then have to start again. This could be here forever. Um, let's dismiss that one and dismiss that one. Yeah, look at that. There's, um, there's actually this is a this is some sort of nebula or some sort of first uh, galactic storm. And we just can't do what we have to do here. Okay, we're going to need to get an iron shield in here. So let's just get this thing away from here, and we'll move across to this one over here. Keeps on being knocked out. Jump, 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 jump. No, didn't make it. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Actually, these are all been now done. Um, okay, so they're back at war again, the other two. Uh, if we just go back into our fourth fleet and top up with ships again. So now we have the 11 ships that we wanted. This will be nice and strong for us. That one's out of there. Right, so it's just a lo very localized anomaly in space, which is going to eventually we'll be able to do that one okay. To 
decline that one. Now the um, the enemy pirate ships are not around anywhere, which is fine. God, this thing is really moving fast with its uh, population. Population growth of 12%, which is fantastic. New spy appears. So we've now got a second spy. That's good. It's going back in for starfighters again. Still trying to get the territory map of the Formalsa systems. We'll see how we go. Wow, this is this is really, really growing so fast. And with getting the growth, it's gonna then bring this money up. Um, what's the maximum we can have on this planet? So four billion basically. So it will at the moment it's trying to not pay any it's told them don't pay any taxes, just do what you can and get your approval as high as you can, get your growth as high as you can, and just get a population here so we can start to then ge generate revenue at some stage. Um, but this is actually fairly cheap for us, really, at negative 1,000 at this point in time. The Keterov world is, is draining us at about 5,000 in comparison. And then I've detected, so we're still exploring everything. Let's have a bit of a look in here. How are we going in this side? We're starting to still pick up more troops. We'll just let them keep on coming. Everything's sort of working fairly well at the moment. Um, I might just, uh, I think we probably should end this end this episode here. We're about, you know, about the right amount of time in. Let's have a look and see what we've got over through here. Again, just a very, very small system. So we can't make use of the other. Now, one thing we could do, once, the, once our spies get a little bit better, there we go. We've actually now finished off the Starfighter research completed and mission complete so he's now back from there let's just see if we can send him in if we target the um the formalsa of uh, formalsa systems mega corp so this is the tekens and we try to steal research information on the heavy iron weapons would be good but it's only 59 percent. so i think we'll ignore that we'll just let him do his own thing it's a bit too complex for that one you know they've taken this this little world so they are expanding back out this other side. This is all good stuff for us ultimately. Yeah, what's that? The little cargo freighter. Independent freighter from somewhere. We don't know where. Asteroids back out this way. We're going to need to find refueling points out here somewhere. Actually, here's a whole lot of other small little uh, nebulas around these little systems. These can slow you right down. So there's not much out this other side. But having seeing a, an independent freighter out through here means that there must be something in here somewhere that is sort of you know worth having a bit of a look for. Meantime, looks like we've got uh, we're building up like a nice little network of uh, of locations back in here. Let's have a look and see if there's any other. Okay, Nimbus back over here is too far away for us to go and get, but that's a nice world for us ultimately. If we can get another world in between there, in these we don't have any other real options there just yet. Potentially, when we're at war, uh, we may end up with something like if we end up at war with the Quamino. Let's just continue on where we are. Anyway, look, I will end this episode here, guys. So thanks for watching, and I'll, um, I'll catch you uh, next episode.